Hello again. In this video, we start explaining what the simulated annealing algorithm is and see how it, it works. Now, notice the name actually suggests something. It's simulated. So this is called the simulated annealing algorithm. Let's find out what that is. Um, this idea is inspired from the process of annealing in metalwork. This process called annealing is uh, used to obtain low energy states uh, of a solid metal, right? And the way annealing works in metal work, the way it's done is uh, as follows. The temperature of a solid metal is increased until the metal melts. So we put the metal in a heat bath and then we increase the temperature so much until the metal melts, right? Right, it becomes like liquidized liquid. After that, that metal in that state now in the liquid condition, liquid liquid state, in the liquid state, it is cooled down. So we cool it down, i.e., instead of increasing the temperature, now we decrease the temperature carefully and gradually until the particles are rearranged in the ground state of the solid. So what will happen is when the metal is heated up so much it melts and then when it's cooled uh, uh, gradually its internal structure will change right with this the physical properties will also change because the internal structure changes now what we get we get you know metal with different physical properties this will happen if the maximum temperature is high enough and it is decreased slowly of course so very high temperature, the metal melts, and then we uh, de decrease the temperature gradually. Uh, and what, with that, what, what that will do is, will it will change the physical properties of the metal because the internal structure changes. Now, this idea is being simulated here. So this is a simulation of the process of annealing. This problem can be used to generate a solution to combinatorial or permutation opt optimization problems. And as we mentioned, the traveling salesman problem is a typical example of these, right? And we're going to have the following analogy or the following equivalence. In our combinatorial opt optimization problems, we have solutions, but in the actual annealing of, of metal, we have states in the physical system, right? So the states of the material in in, in, in the metal, in the actual annealing process, will be equivalent to our solutions, right? Our solutions in our combinatorial problem. So this is the first equivalence. The second one is the cost of a solution will be equivalent to the energy of a state the metal is in, right? So we'll have these two uh, uh, assumptions, or these two analogies, I'm sorry, and then we'll use the same idea uh, 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 to simulate this annealing process to find a good solution to a permutation problem. Now, I have actually forgotten the name of the person who came up with this idea, but you can find that in the literature. Our uh, concern here is just to explain it and see how it works. So remember these two assumptions, and let's have a look at the actual algorithm. What we will do here, we will have a temperature variable to simulate the heating process. So remember we have heating then what, we, what we'll do is we will give it a very high value and then slowly decrease it or cool it as our algorithm runs. So we have a temperature variable. We start it at a very high va value and then as the algorithm iterates or as the algorithm repeats, we will slowly decrease that temperature. This will simulate the cooling process after heating up the metal as we explained before. So what we'll do is um, if you remember the maxima and the minima we, uh, I explained in, in the previous video, what we'll do, and uh, by the way, just to, uh, to add something here, is that when we move, uh, we all, when we move from one solution to another, we always try to move to a better solution, a solution that gives us a better value or a better uh, 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 value when we evaluate it, right? So for example, for the traveling theism problem, we always want to move towards a solution that decreases the distance that we have to travel, right? Because we want the solution with the minimum distance. 
so if we have a solution and then the next solution for example increases the distance then obviously we want to avoid that but if we do that then we will get in this problem of getting stuck in the local minima and as we explained before right I hope this makes sense we don't want to get stuck in the local minima so we want to try other solutions as well and this is what we're going to do here we will more frequently accept solutions which are worse than our current solution as long as this temperature variable is still high you'll see that in the code so what are the worst solutions as we mentioned for example for the traveling salesman problem we're looking for solutions that decrease the distance the overall distance that we have to travel but if we have a, a solution that increases the distance then in simulated annealing we will try to accept that under some conditions because that will help us jump out of a local minimum that we experienced before so by doing this we allow the algorithm to jump out of any local optimums i.e local minimum or maximum depends on the problem we're trying to solve it goes to early while the algorithm is executing right so the chance of accepting worse solutions will reduce as the temperature decreases remember the temperature variable we will decrease the chances of accepting worse solutions when the temperature is going down so by doing this we allow the algorithm to slowly focus on an area of the search space in which a close to optimum solution can be found so we mentioned uh, in the beginning of, of these videos that we will be happy with a good enough solution a close enough solution to the real and optimum an optimal uh, uh, solution right well hopefully it will help us find a close to optimum solution in our search space this idea of jumping out of a local optimum a local minima or local maxima so let me stop here in the next video i'll continue explaining the idea behind the simulated annealing algorithm thanks for watching and i'll see you next time